Okay. Um, hello, everyone, and uh, it's my pleasure that I'm uh, here in this webinar. Yes, the previous uh, webinar was uh, more than one year ago, and uh, it was a result that we got for the first project that we did for an NSF granted uh, project. And this is um, a new direction that we are uh, going through it. And uh, here I'm going to present the uh, the study and investigations that we did to uh, check the effects of preventive protocols in COVID spread using an agent-based uh, framework. Um, okay, and first I want to uh, talk about why we study epidemic models. Uh, epidemic models help us understand uh, how uh, infection disease uh, spread through a society and it provides us insights about uh, different factors that are crucial for developing uh, effective public health interventions. And also it allows us to make predictions uh, about uh, the potential impact of the uh, 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 pandemic and uh, help assess the effectiveness of interventions uh, like vaccination, social distancing, traveling uh, restrictions and other uh, preventions. And also uh, policymakers rely on uh, epidemic models to formulate evidence-based policies and guidelines. And uh, one of the most important thing is that sharing simplified epidemic models with the public can enhance understanding of disease transmission dynamics for, um, for people in public, something very uh, simple that are un understandable very easily. So uh, based on the, these thoughts that we had in our mind, we developed a model in NetLogo. NetLogo is a multi-agent um, modeling environment and a programming language designed for simulating complex systems and modeling uh, agent-based uh, frameworks. Uh, it allows you to uh, have a figure for the, uh, for the whole model that you are developing and the set of the parameters uh, that you can um, uh, consider uh, different situations for them, like the slider or um, switch on and off uh, icons for them, and also to have the plots and figures that show you how the, the model is uh, uh, evolving over time and uh, different compartments of the model is changing over time. I'm going to talk about these uh, figures later. And now I try to go through different parts of the, the model we develop. Agent-based model, uh, it has specified the dynamics uh, by which a population of agents engage uh, in interactions and undergo evolution through time. So we have a network of agents uh, that they are connected to each other. And uh, we consider different parameters and attributes for these agents or individuals in our network. First is the connections. And uh, these uh, connections uh, represent that we, we have a network, uh, we have a set of a uh, number of nodes or agents, and then we have the average node degree, which represent the, the, the connections for each node. Uh, so we connected the different nodes to each other based on that average number. And then we ask to relocate the nodes and put the nodes that they are connected to each other close to each other, we, uh, which simulate the, um, the local connections for each person. And then uh, over that, we create long distance connection that simulate the, if uh, people uh, travel to another location or if they move a uh, different location and make connections with people who are not usually close to them. And then, uh, we consider demographic parameters like um, age and gender. For um, age uh, and gender, we have uh, the option uh, that if we want to consider those effects in the model or not. And uh, in the for the age, if we want to consider the age distribution, if we want to be an, a random uniform distribution, or if we want to use the U.S. Uh, distribution uh, for the uh, for the population that got from the census. And also we are able to check uh, the, the age range or the male and female uh, percentage of population. 
which allow us to simulate different environments, which was one of the interesting things that we wanted to study. And the other one is the health uh, risk levels. We have considered three, four uh, different health risks, uh, people who are older than 65 years old, pregnant women, and uh, cases that they have some health conditions and cases that have serious health conditions. And uh, it's uh, possible for the model to uh, define how many cases we want have to have in our simulation and see what will happen in the model. And then we apply this IR model. Uh, it's a fundamental epidemiological model that is based on uh, some uh, differential equation used to understand and analyze the spread of the infectious disease. Uh, and it has three different uh, compartments, individuals who are susceptible to the disease, but uh, have not yet been infected, individuals who are currently infected with the disease and are capable of spreading uh, uh, the disease to other people and individuals who were infected with the disease and recovered and now immune to further uh, infection for a period of time. And we have the parameters for them. First, the initial infected cases who guaranteed the start of the spread of the disease. And then we have the chance of the getting COVID, which is the probability of transmission for the COVID. And it can be changed based on different variants of the COVID. Uh, we have the infection infected period of time and immune period of time. And uh, the parameters that we have for the symptomatic cases and the, the symptomatic cases, when it is start, the active duration that they can transmit the, the disease and distribution that we have for the, the symptomatic cases. And the one other parameter that was important for us was uh, long COVID that we want to do, be able to, if we want to study it or not. And um, it's just considered based on a threshold that after that threshold, if they have still symptoms, they're gonna consider them as long COVID. And a small portion of the cases that they were super immune, uh, it's very small, but uh, as it was reported in the model, in the uh, data, we considered it in the model. Preventive, uh, preventive protocols are the precaution ways that people uh, help people to prevent the spread of a disease. Uh, like the ones that we had for uh, COVID, uh, uh, like wearing masks, social distancing, or guaranteeing sick people, and also the vaccination. Um, for these uh, preventive models, we consider two uh, different set of uh, parameters, the precaution percentage that it relates to people, how they behave, and also the vaccination. And for vaccination, we consider that if we want to have the vaccination in the model or not, and when it starts, uh, the percentage of people who are uh, doing the vaccination, efficiency of the vaccination, uh, decay in the vaccination efficiency, and also the vaccination priority that allow us to start the vaccination with people who are in high risk level. And the compartment model uh, in that, uh, in our modeling, uh, these type of models allow us to agents to be in a specific status in each time, and we can track number of agents in each compartment over time. So if we click on the setup, then we're gonna have a set up the nodes with the defined um, average connections and long distance connections and the other um, attributes that I explained in the previous slides. And then it, at each time point, the model uh, check all the, uh, the status of all the uh, agents and uh, update the status based on the uh, previous uh, status and the neighbors uh, that they have. And then by running the, uh, the model, we can see that uh, how different compartments of the model uh, is changing in this uh, in the uh, in the in the model over time, and uh, also some other measurements that we can do. For instance, we were interested to see the number of reinfected uh, agents in the model. How many time, uh, how many K uh, nodes or how many percentage of nodes are reinfected again, and also the productivity. And the productivity is calculated based on the. Mm, the as uh, symptomatic cases are not uh, able to uh, work proficiently, uh, uh, they are not productive 
during the time that they are symptomatic. It's kind of we are calculating the percentage of people who are uh, having symptoms. And uh, um, you know, uh, all of these things that I uh, explained so far and the model in NetLogo allow us, allow a person to go through the model, play with the parameters and see how different uh, parameters, preventive uh, policies can change the behavior of the, of the of the system and how it's changed the situation and different compartments of the uh, system. But if you want to see the, the average behavior of the system, we need to do the multiple realizations. And for this one, you know, we need to make an ensemble of multiple realization uh, with the same set of parameters that uh, based on that, we can uh, analyze the um, average behavior of the system and explore various uh, potential outcomes of the model. Here, I, I'm gonna just show you for a setup of parameters, when we run the model, you, we're gonna see different situations happens because we have different uh, randomness. Uh, we have some randomness in the, uh, in, the, in the model and that randomness over time can change the, uh, the behavior of the system. So uh, we did some uh, uh, realization for any set of the parameters. Here, I'm gonna show you just uh, some of the uh, results that we made based on our model. For each of these figures uh, and for each point, we run the model for 100 times and did the average uh, behavior, um, calculation for uh, each of those ones. Um, I have four figure here and I try to explain these four figures uh, in short time. Um, the X axis represent the probability of transmission, which is the chance of the getting COVID. And then uh, in the X axis, uh, we have average number of infections per node that shows that how many times they get infected. Um, the color bar represents the average duration of the pandemic, that for how many times that we run the, uh, the code. And the stop time of the code is the time that we don't have any infected or immune case in the, uh, in the model anymore. Um, so this graph represents that the average node degree, uh, as the beginning of the, the pandemic, if you remember that they, uh, the policymaker tried to convince people to reduce their connections and try to minimize their connection and, uh, with other people. And here we show that uh, by uh, going from high degrees of connections to low degrees, you can see that uh, even in, in high degrees of connections, uh, even in low probabilities of transmissions, the disease is going to spread very fast in the system. And uh, the average number of infections are, is around one, which means that most of the cases get infected very fast uh, in very short time. But as uh, the connections reduces, we see that there is a shift uh, for the higher probabilities that we don't see that the, the, the disease is gonna spread fast. It, it takes time for the disease and we have uh, many reinfections for the cases. So um, some cases get in, uh, reinfected and reinfected and in very low uh, degrees, you see that it's um, even, even for very high uh, probability of transmissions, uh, the runtime of the model is higher and few cases uh, we have, they have re uh, reinfections. So it takes more time when, when we reduce the connection, it takes more time the, uh, for the disease to be spread in the, uh, the society and recirculate in it. And for the long distance connections, uh, again, we see that uh, when we go from 0% uh, uh, long distance connection to 20% long distance connection, how the behavior is changing. And you can see that, again, uh, we have a, a change in the uh, a transition for the uh, probability of transmissions when we go from 0% uh, uh, to 20% uh, long distance connection, you see that uh, when we have a, lo a lot of uh, long distance connections traveling, uh, even in short uh, probabilities, the disease is gonna spread fast in the society. But um, when we eliminate long distance, the disease takes more time uh, uh, and, uh, more time to be spread in the society and not uh, many cases get uh, in, uh, infected many times. 
And for the precaution, uh, here right now, the, I, I showed the average duration in the y-axis. Uh, for precaution, we went from zero to 100, and you see that uh, when the precaution is zero, even with uh, for low uh, prob probability of transmission, uh, we have a peak in the duration of the, the pandemic. It takes a long time. It circulates a, a long time in the in the society, and the cases, um, all the cases get infected. But as we go to higher per precaution. Um, when like the one that we did, you see for 100 precaution, you see that even for high probability of transmission for the disease, not all the cases get infected and the spread of the disease uh, stops very soon. And uh, this figure represents the, the results for the vaccination percentage. You can see that even with a small uh, vaccination percentage that we do for the society, it uh, decree, uh, we see a big change for the uh, number of cases and, uh, the, the, and the duration of the pandemic in the society. And uh, the for higher probabilities also, then the time is changing, uh, which is uh, uh, very uh, important because uh, um, at the beginning, and, and remember that these vaccinations start just uh, in the set of as a standard setting that we had, it started after three months. So uh, we are also interested to see how it's going to happen for the other uh, situation, but I didn't show it here. But you can see that even a small uh, changes can make a lot of differences. So uh, in conclusion, uh, I can say that our model depicts the spread of a uh, virus within a population considering a number of initial infected cases and whether it can propagate through the entire population or be uh, contained before infecting some individuals. And uh, based on those figures, I can say that reducing both local and long distance connections on average acts as a deterrent to the rapid spread of the disease and implementation of precautionary and vaccination policies not only decelerates the spread of the disease, but also lowers the likelihood of reinfection. These are some of the results for this uh, work and uh, still is in, in progress. And uh, we're gonna have much more uh, nice results in the future. And I wanna acknowledge uh, my colleagues in this work and uh, thank you for listening.